Wait. <laughs> <laughs> this is why. <laughs> this is why. <laughs> okay, no, I'll just sing it. I'm Megan. I'm Maggie. We are dating. We are. <laughs> Hi, my name is Dalila, and this is my queer love story. My name is Dixon, and I'm a recording artist from Toronto, Ontario. I go by he, they pronouns. This is Bella. Uh, you're gentle them in Montreal. Uh, my pronouns are they, them. I'm sending you this video tonight because I have a queer love story turned friendship that I thought I would send to you. Hi, we're Chris and Mark. Um, so uh, I would say the COVID, it's kind of been, you know, an ups and downs uh, in trials and tribulations. Hi, my name is Jay Northcott, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about love. <laughs> um, I hate it, um, to be honest. And... Um, I think there's something also so beautifully disgusting. I always think of love as like, you know, those moments when you're just like, <laughs> but it feels so good. We met and we fell in love <laughs> during the pandemic. How? I don't know, but it happened. Okay. I have tried to film this so many times and I am struggling so much. I want to talk about my queer love story with myself. So we celebrated 20 years in November, in the middle of all of this. It all started last year, uh, the beginning of the panorama. And I remember going in the early summer to the beach with my friends. And then one of my friends posted a picture and she tagged me. And then um, right away, like <laughs> this girl followed me. And then, so we followed each other um you know the regular thing and but it was basically a window tap so she started liking some of my pictures and then i was like okay interesting i see you they were singing at a jazz club and locking eyes with me the entire night uh which was exciting and confusing but just made me feel really alive this person uh this, this musician is also queer also non-binary and the way that they capture that which is really fucking hard to articulate in the human experience was so palpable and their voice is so serene. It was one of those times where you just look at someone and you know that they are important, that they are going to be in, li in, in your life for uh, a good long time. During the first lockdown in Nova Scotia, I had a socially distanced walk to the park with someone who now is my partner and we are living together. We've been dating for less than a year, so we are the epitome of queer women, just you hauling it. Um, so I did show my shot and one night at midnight, I was like, I'm just gonna do it at midnight. So she's probably not awake and then just wait for the response like tomorrow morning. Um, so I slid into her DMs and I was like, hey, I was just wondering, do you listen to Girl in Red? Um, and she replied back with a yes. And I was like, okay, great. Um, and as all of this was happening, the world was getting a lot darker, but I was deriving such a sense of light from this new person in my life, um, who I was completely and utterly enamored by. Um, and I'd only met them two times. One minute you're waiting for the sky to fall. Next you're dazzled by the beauty of it all. Let's get into it. Love, queer love, during the pandemic, the panorama, upon the replay has been absolute trash. Since we were living in different towns, that meant we couldn't see each other um, because we were taking every precaution. 
and not even traveling outside of our communities at the time. So for me, it was video chats because that was the main way that we stayed connected. Um, texts and phone calls just kind of weren't cutting it. So having that visual connection to each other was really nice. And we would say goodnight every night on video chat. And I always look forward to that. <laughs> so hard to cuddle with a computer, but there you are. <laughs> I miss you. Miss you too. Mwah. <laughs> I have had a couple of flings. I've had a couple of moments, a couple of, you know, situations, um, situationships, I should say. Uh, but um, it's just not the same, to be honest. It's not the same because we can't do what we can regularly do during lockdown, during like this crazy time that we're in because everything is closed. So you have to really, really get in like, Innovated. We were at home all the time, so we had to figure out ways to, you know, if we're going to be stuck in this four walls together, we have to, you know, learn how to cohabitate. We have different rooms and stuff like that, and that's when your real, yeah, your room fine. really, your little, um, which, yeah, your little, little uh, your little, you know, your <laughs> pan <laughs> den, as he calls it, the pan den, um, not the man's den, the pan den. Uh, so he goes down there, he has this little electric, he got an electric drum set during yeah during uh, COVID and I was like, yes, you can have electric drum set, but you're not getting no mm -hmm. amps or anything like that. Uh, no. I can hear tapa tapa. I'm just not ready to hear a full drum set. Something solo. to do, um, just kill the time. We remained support systems to each other and would spend hours and hours and hours on FaceTime. We went through all five, there are five of the Twilight movies. So we started texting, um, but she was back in Cape Breton during the pandemic and I was here in Bedford living with my parents um but we texted a lot like we would take a long time to reply back but we would text back a long ass text with what we had done throughout the day and it was just nice because it sort of like it felt like we were in the 19th century sending love letters to each other um so it was just it was cute <laughs> um and that made my heart raise since the beginning the idea of spending every day in the same house together i think was kind of frightening for both of us to begin with we also knew that we had company that we had somebody that would always be there for us so how lucky was that but could that last? Could that not be frayed by all this contact, all this constant <laughs> in each other's lives? I think the first time we actually touched. Touched. Oh, it would have been the corn maze. I think it was. Cameron asked if he could hold my hand. Near like the end of the corn maze too. Like I had thought about it. I knew I wanted to do it. I knew I wanted to hold her hand. And I just thought, like, if she wants to hold my hand, then, like, that's a good sign. And I, yeah, but it took me a while to even ask you in the corn maze. But I did. And it happened. And you, we did we did hold hands. Yeah. And then you told me how you told all your friends that you were going to ask to hold my hand. I thought that was the cutest thing. <laughs> I did. I told everyone. Recently, I have been going on a couple of walks with this boy and he has this smile that every time I see it, it just like destroys my little heart. And I haven't really got to feel any of that kind of stuff throughout the pandemic. So it's like been very nice. And because he has his own bubble, we can't like kiss right now. We can't even really like hug. We like touch his arm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we watched a lot of documentaries about like the two S L G B T community, yep. um, and we watched um, things about like how how you know like the the the, the riots um, in L A and everything else like that. Just you know things that I knew, but maybe he didn't know, um, so that we can you know cohabitate. But we finally met in October, and we went on our first date, and the plan was to go to Citadel Hill and watch the sunset and have a picnic, you know gay but it was really cute like we talked about everything we had homemade wine um and like cheese and crackers and like uh, strawberries and chocolate i think 
um yeah i and i think we just we both we both knew right at that moment i told everyone that i wanted to hold your hand and then you told me and then i told you that i told everyone that i wanted to hold your hand <laughs> that's, so precious. that's it but like there's also something so beautiful about that pandemic like or love or whatever you want to call it because we have to get to know each other we're just like going on walks and like talking and learning so much about each other and it's not just like leading up to sex so it's kind of beautiful when you love us in a dangerous time okay take three um so what did I see in a love that I had not seen before? I was like, oh, cool girl. Um, she seems gay. I wasn't like super hourly queer at the time. I guess realized that the kind of love that I've been searching for was not <laughs> in the gender that I commonly went for. I am bisexual. I discovered that I was bisexual during lockdown 2020. And so I was like, oh, like, new friend, <laughs> new gal pal. <laughs> <laughs> and then we made out on the first date and I bit her earring off by accident. Yeah. <laughs> Just, like... I met you and it was just so easy. It was so easy. And it didn't feel like butterflies or like the crushes that I had had in the past. Those were the feelings I was waiting for. But instead it just felt like it had always been. I think the sweetest moment of queer love for me was like realizing that this kind of love was actually possible. It wasn't this huge realization. It was this moment of how long have I been loving this person? Because it feels like it must have been forever. When your lover's in a dangerous time And they make you believe that your love's a crime Well, nothing worth having comes without some kind of fight. And we talked every single day. Sometimes it would be just to check in and say I'm thinking about you. Sometimes it would be to send a song. Sometimes it would be to send a horoscope uh, to try and find some kind of sign from uh, up above that would confirm that we were meant to be in each other's lives in some kind of way. And I've been struggling trying to record this because I think that I am slowly realizing that maybe this relationship isn't as strong as I thought it was. Ever since I came out, I have immediately invalidated my identity. I'm not queer enough. Um, I haven't had the right experiences to identify this way. Um, I'm not a part of any community. I know that a big reason is because of the pandemic. I tell myself, oh, if it wasn't a pandemic, you know, I would go to queer spaces and I would, you know, make more queer friends and you know like oh that like that would validate me but would it would it or am i just using that as an excuse when we went home um to see your parents yeah and there was there was not any overt homophobia when we were there but when we came back there was some like some words that were said previous that they wanted to say while we were there yeah and that but insinuated that our relationship was not not great, which was hard to hear. Yeah. Um, and it was, it was really tricky. I'm really glad I had you there. And, and I'm glad, glad I was I had there. You. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad that you were there to support me. Mm -hmm. 
And I feel like that that's validated so many things that I've like felt about myself and struggled with before. Mm-hmm. And you gave me a safe place to feel all those feelings. Yeah, and it's been <laughs> super like healing and, and awesome. And I'm so lucky I have you. Yeah, ditto. Ditto. <laughs> this queer relationship that I'm having with myself is hard um it's lonely um but i'm also very happy and i feel lucky um and i feel like excitement i guess I would say I felt the most alone during the first few months of the first lockdown. There was nowhere to go, nothing to do. Uh, We hadn't seen our friends and family for months and everything we were doing just felt like a distraction. And the thing that made us feel the most tender was going and getting groceries for Daniel's grandparents. We'd call them every two weeks, find out what they needed, And Joan would provide us this mental map on the phone, you know, of where to go. Turn left down this aisle, go on this shelf. Down here, you'll find this thing that Grandpa and I like. And it was such a wonderful feeling bringing them their groceries and being able to focus on someone else during such a very difficult time. We've gone, we both have been going through it during the pandemic with our own um, travels and whatnot. And also like both just trying to like navigate ourselves, but also being in our first gay and also just like first overall relationship. Um, but it's also been nice to, that we both have been on the same page uh, for the most part. And also like how time is so weird right now during the pandemic like it's only been seven months but even though it's only been seven months it has felt like we've been together for two years just because of how much time we have been spending together because there's nothing else to do (laughs) and it's just more intimate and i think this time it's been a little bit it's a little it's it's a little bit harder mentally this time you know um, he is working still because his job is considered doesn't stop now. It's considered, you know, um, uh, what do you call that? Necessary. Necessary or whatever. And then my my job, because I'm an institution, I'm not really working, but I'm still doing educating and stuff like that. But I think it's more of a mental thing now. It's just because it's like even though we can see kind of the the end of the of the line, it's still kind of hard to um, to see, you know, life going back to normal. I guess you could say. What is normal anymore? You gotta kick at the darkness till it bleeds daylight. The part of queer love that was the most joyful was going on a 25 day trip with my partner and our dog Sheldon and getting married. We stayed along the ocean and watched whales one afternoon. We stayed at a cliffside cabin. We went hiking. And when it came time for our ceremony, we baked our own cake, we cooked our own meal. The entire day and the entire ceremony was just the two of us, and it was absolutely perfect. The love that I focused on, I would have to say, is the love between my family and friends, especially because we have the time and nothing but time to do so. I've really, I've really made it a point to connect with my best friends, to connect with my mom, my siblings, my nephews. And it's, it's been so special and so important and so good for my soul and so good for our soul. Even going out for a simple drive, uh, when they shut things down, we were trying to follow all the rules and it takes its toll. Yeah, we sit, we, we take our drives and that's how we communicate. We know we go out and we have our drives in the country and we talk. And my gay ass sent this person who I had met two times. Uh, I sent them bagels in the mail. I also sent them my sweater because 
I wanted to be able to hug them. And I had never really done that before. I think, well, Maggie just is, like, pure joy. So I feel like every time that I'm with her, it's just, like, a joyful experience. We figured it out. We figured it out. We and found a way. A yeah. little alcohol and uh, yeah. good cooking. A good mm. cooking helps a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that definitely calms the, gee, I'm kind of sick of seeing you today feeling, oh, we're going to eat, we're going to drink. And then you make lunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> This is a relationship I know that will never end. I will always be in this frustrating <laughs> queer relationship. And I truly would not want to have it any other way. Realizing that if we could get through this, we can get through anything. Yeah. Not much learned. A lot of confirmed. I'm just happy if I have her around, so, yeah. <laughs> if, you know, if we survive for, uh, you know, months of, uh, on end, stuck in the same house, and we haven't killed each other yet, then we're doing something right, right? It's been a few times. Oh. <laughs> I, sorry, my current queer crush just DM'd me, so that's the smile. Um, different story hasn't really started yet, and now I'm blushing. I fell in love really quickly. Um, love is complicated, but it's beautiful and disgusting. <laughs> um, but I hope you have somebody who tells you that they love you, especially during these pandemic times. Bye, friends. What time's the sunset? Hmm. Don't know.